Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by Mjolnir... is that seven? Not sure. And the request is as follows. The Guardian Spirits will be Ho'oh and Hinobishin. Soul Cores will involve Hellish Hag, Magatsu Warrior, White Tiger, uh, Ancient Neotengu, Shuten Doji, and Yamanba. Weapons will be Kusarigama and Hatchets, and then later I'll be fighting both Yoshitsune and Yorimitsu. I thought about doing a purity build and using some soul cores I don't mess around with often, normally spam Ipon and Kasha all day, and I play every weapon but don't give these two as much love. Yoshitsune and Yorimitsu slash Raikou are super fun for me, and don't worry, you'll get that. So let's show you what's going on with uh, my weapons. You can see my Demon Horde Kusarigama. The Anima Bonus Grapple is very helpful, and I think for the enemies I was fighting, uh, particularly Yorimitsu, it was pretty essential. So I think on this setup, I had a lot of difficulties managing my Anima. So Demon Horde weapons were quite clutch. And same with my hatchets, you can see the stats that are on here. Let's get on to the Guardian Spirits, because I want to talk about a few things. So with Ho'oh, you may notice that I don't have the exact setup as you requested, and the reason for that um, is as follows. So where's my Heobition? The thing is, there's a ton of attunement. So Shuten Doji, Hellish Hag, and Yamanba occupy 23, and I just, unless I had attunement cost minus one, or unless you do, I, I can't really find a way to mash all the soul cores together on the exact spot. So I just worked with what I had, and you'll see what I did mess around with. So when it comes to the soul cores, White Tiger makes the most sense on Ho'oh because of the purity overlap. Definitely get this one to rank 30 in case you run purity weapons. This anima bonus enemy purified is actually really good if you're using like a melee weapon to inflict that purity. Then you get like several anima back. It's pretty awesome. Or if you're a fan of sacred arrows, you could use those too. And hopefully get a headshot. Almost forgot about that. Um, otherwise, all I cared for was the Yokai ability key pulse. Next, we have Magatsu Warrior. Definitely get this up to rank 30, irrespective of which Guardian Spirit you put it on, simply because of the Anima Charge bonus, Cumulative Damage, double A. And of course, hey, Active Skill Damage, what's not to love about that boost? Um, what's nice for me is that I had Life Drain Yokai ability hit, which just makes these abilities that much more powerful. Last but not least, Ancient Neotengu, you don't need to rank this up unless you're particularly attached to the Anima Bonus Ranged Hit, in which it's kind of redundant since you already have Anima Bonus Ranged Hit on ho -Oh. I would have liked to have put this on uh, my Brute Spirit, but then I just didn't have enough attunement. Like, that's just what it boiled down to. So if you can, like, mix things around or if you get an attunement cost minus one on this, then you can kind of, like, you know, play around with various things. But yeah, it just wasn't in the cards for this setup. Uh, now with Heobition, I had to put the remaining cores of Shuten Doji, Hellish Hag, and Yamanba on here. Um, I would have liked to have, again, swapped out one of these two, probably Yamanba, I would say, in favor of Ancient Neotengu, but again, I needed the attunement, and that's just something I didn't have. So, yeah, you, you'd probably need attunement cost minus one on quite a few of these cores, so you could get them exactly the way you want. So with Heobition, again, I would have preferred to have put Neotengu, but I couldn't. So I put Shuten Doji on here instead. And yeah, you can just see the Shuten Doji. Um, if you want to get more break, it's definitely worth boosting, but I didn't bother. Um, Hellish Hag is another one I would kind of recommend boosting. Both these stats are pretty nice, but I didn't bother. And same with the Yamanba, I didn't bother boosting it whatsoever. Uh, so this is really going to be utilitarian in terms of providing me buffs. I've got a gap closer, two different types, so it just wasn't ideal in terms of how I wanted to place it, but it's still pretty handy. The spell ailment strong attack is probably something I should have utilized a bit more often in the upcoming fights, but I didn't. But yeah, so this is kind of how I arrange things, but let's just showcase what's possible in Yokai Shift. Here we go. So opening with ho -Oh can be pretty crazy. And then just throw in White Tiger, and then everything kind of just gets purified. But yeah, this can be actually a little tricky to work with because White Tiger is a full commitment to your animation. And that's quite a long time you're staying there. And when it works, it works really well. 
but it can be tricky. And same with Mogatsu Warrior. If you're gonna go for the supercharged version, it's just gonna take some time. So really, you can rely upon Neo Tango to do some stuff, but that can be kind of troublesome. New Vision's a little different too. This is gonna feel a little weird, a little niche, admittedly. Oh, come on, am I messing that up? Oh well, let's go. You can pretty much guarantee a fire application by using those together. But it is ultimately gonna feel, in my opinion, pretty weird. So Yokai Shift isn't really gonna be super powerful this time. It's just, well, I mean, it's still gonna be powerful, but it's just not gonna be as easy to work with. So let's just showcase some combos. A lot of these soul cores can feel awkward. So I'll try to show you what I can come up with. All right, here's something kind of neat. Nah, not that. See if he survives. This is pretty cool. So yeah, you can pull, use Kusa pull on human targets and pull them into the position you'd like. Very nice, get that sweet damage. But yeah, generating anima is gonna, in my opinion, be a little troublesome. So you may not necessarily be able to rely on your yokai abilities as often as you may like. At least that's what I noticed. But when you can, it's not too bad. Pretty cool. Magatsu can do a lot of damage if you can keep somebody close to you or at low key. Still got some really cool things you can do. Neo Tango doesn't work as well, just wanted to show that. Our Tiger should be fine though, provided the elevation's in my freaking favor. Which it really didn't want to be, it seems. Yeah, White Tiger is very tricky to pull off. Fortunately, if you can get Confusion off and then Yaman Ball off, you can do a significant amount of damage. Come on, let's try this again. See ya! Alright, let's do a few more things, and then I'll probably spend the rest of the time in the gameplay showcase. Because this is ultimately pretty difficult for me to work with. Whoops. All right, one more time against each of these and then I'm good to go. Nice job. Nice, really nice. Really nice. <laughs> yeah, it's troublesome even for me. Come 
Come on, really? All right. It looks like that's all I've got. I think that's what I'll you to do for now. Um, yeah, I, I don't really got any words. I think we'll just go into the gameplay showcase and show you what's possible. I'll see you guys soon enough. All right, let's put this to the test. So Kashin Koji is going to go against two people wielding the Sohei Amaru for lore reasons. Let's go with that. Now, before I get too deep into talking about what's going on, I want to be honest and say that it was actually very difficult for me to work with the setup. And I know I personally might change a couple of soul cores, but again, because I was requested to use a few things, I made sure to do so. Now let's get back to the fight. Now whenever Yoshitsune uses Gust Talisman, just throw out Advancing Storm like twice and then basically nullifies it, so you don't have to worry about hatchets becoming totally useless. Um, I think I might forget at some point that he has Gust Talisman on, but oh well, I'm right, but it's such a minor thing, all things considered. But yep, yeah, overall Yoshitsune is a battle in which you want to bait his long animations and then respond uh, within the confines of those abilities. So what I mean is he may commit to a long animation, but when he does so, there's a lot of spots that you can freely attack him. Oh, very nice, got the Atamir. And so I think a great example of this will be shown when he does Sacred Bird Cry. It is a pretty scary animation if you deal with it head on, but that's why you just sidestep him, and then basically it's freebies from there. All right, let's see what I go with. All right, just move a little bit to the side. Look at that. I get the full high stance combo with Deliverance off. That's exquisite. All right, let's take them out real quick. Um, these Soul Cores again, they're, I think it's just the overlap between two gap closers and just a bunch of different factors. I felt like certain things were missing, but you know, gotta work with what I got. All right, now Yorimitsu is gonna be very challenging for me this time around. So Neo Tango is great, but I wanted some other cores that really didn't cost as much. White Tiger is really not gonna be that effective against a purity-based enemy. Uh, Pelish Hag is kind of helpful, and so I'm fine with that, but I find that it overlaps with Yamamba quite a bit. And Shuten Doji, while it is a good soul core, for like giving buffs and stuff and can potentially apply confusion with say a secondary element at your disposal. The fact of the matter is if she purifies you then Shuten Doji's effects are pretty pointless. So I really have to rely upon my knowledge of these weapons more than anything else uh, to help me coast through this fight. So I'm trying to get her out of key but she's basically able to get me more out of key. There are a couple of cool combos I'm able to do that I know I showcase in the dojo, so you'll see them every so often. But I am trying to keep her under pressure all the time, but the fact of the matter is she's going to have so much more key than I'm going to have, So, and now she has a key regenerative buff, so it can be very difficult for me not to have soul cores that I can use in a pinch, uh, especially since my anima generation is basically non-existent against an enemy when they block all my attacks, and that can be very frustrating for players. So. Again, if you are going to stick with the setup, my advice is really understand how to work with your weapons. It is so important for this. Usually I like to have kind of a nice weaving in of, I mean, here, here's a cool combo you can do. Uh, but I usually like to weave in my soul cores with my weapon base play, but this it is a little independent of that. But you can see a couple of things that I've done, which can help make things feel a little spicy and help things flow together. But truth be told, I think the most difficulty I have is when she's in living weapon form simply because, you know, I, I can die really quickly. Um, I've done this scroll in the past, and if she gets a grab, I'm basically dead. If she's going to hit me with her, uh, you know, like her living weapon attacks, I'm basically screwed. So it can be extra challenging to deal with this and not mess up, especially when I don't really have my soul cores uh, that often uh, to use in a pinch. When I don't have the greatest anima generation, it can be extra difficult. So I think the only free time I have might be like the moments where she summons certain things. Try to use Neo Tengu and again it felt really bad because she dodged into it and she wasn't blocking unfortunately. But here's the first moment of the living weapon form so I have to be very careful. So I don't have the most anima as it is. So I may want to use certain things. I know soul cores like Yipo and Dotsra can be very handy. Like when she jumps up I can just like knock her down and flatten her. But I don't have that option. White Tiger is not going to be handy here whatsoever. Magatsu Warrior, big risk. Um, Ancient Neo Tengu might be nice, but it's going to be very difficult to get that anima. 
Yaman Bash, Shuten Doji, and Hellish Hack all won't really work too well in this moment, uh, and they're big risks. So I, again, I have to depend on my weapons, and as you can see, I'm, I realize that I just need to do some, a lot of key damage. So I just do a lot of Demon Undercut as much as I can is the theater key, because there, there is no other recourse that I could easily think of without dying. Particularly when I'm purified, and I'm gonna take a whopping amount of key damage. So, to try to mitigate some of this, I go into Yokai Shift. It's not gonna work the best, because I'm using purity-based stuff against the purity-based opponent, and yeah, she's extra resistant. This felt really bad. Magatsu Warrior got blocked by the freaking lamppost. Oh dear. All right. Oh, I got that in time. Very nice. Knock her down. Probably going to use all oh, Neo Tango. Keep her locked as much as I can. And then probably just spam a little bit more. And then, oh boy. Like that, that attack would instant kill me. I wanted to get confusion off on her and it can be possible. But again, I just don't have the anima that I need. So I have to rely upon my anima bonuses significantly so that I can combo with my soul force more often. But yeah, like she's blocking. She's not necessarily cooperating in terms of I guess acting the way I want. She's deleting my key. There's like one time I can get one of the few times I'm able to parry her a little bit. And I can dodge her, but again, she does a lot of key damage when I'm purified. All right, let's get some anima. Excellent. I'm going to pull her back and then just do some weapon based attacks because I didn't have enough anima to do some crazy Mogatsu play. All right, and now I'm actually. <laughs> it actually sucks. She goes into living weapon form again. It's actually particularly stressful. So I'm like, all right, what's safe? Let's just do Demon Undercut over and over and over again. It'll do a good chunk of key, fortunately, sorry, a good chunk of key damage. She fortunately doesn't regenerate, which is very helpful. I find that if I dodge to the left, it's easier to deal with her versus dodging to the right. Let's see if I can uh, showcase a decent example of that. All right, my, I think when she does her jump attacks, I think, not this one. Oh wait, I went crazy. I did White Tiger, am I crazy? <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I got a little lucky there. Oh well. In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. That was absolutely stressful for me this time around, but I hope it was fun for you. And I will see you guys next time.